Productions a video review of the Hotel Nico Fukuoka located in Fukuoka, Japan. I'm Chris. I'm this is Yellow Productions. We do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. And in this video, we're going to be telling you everything you need to know if you're considering staying at this hotel, including the common areas of the hotel, the neighborhood of the hotel, and the inside of one of the rooms. The Hotel Nico Fukuoka stands 14 stories tall with 300 guest rooms. It's located three blocks away from Fukuoka's Hakata train station, which is really convenient because this is where the major railroads, including the Shinkansen, converge in Fukuoka. But what's extra convenient is that you can actually go from the train station to the hotel via underground passageway. So from this train station, the way to get there is to head down to the basement first floor next to the entrance to the subway and follow the signs for passageway to Gion Station. Walk down about five minutes to P5. It also has a sign that says Hotel Nico Fukuoka. It'll turn down this other very nondescript tunnel, but at the end of the tunnel, you will see a light. No, 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 you're not dying. You'll see a light that says Hotel Nico Fukuoka. And uh, it's a sign that points to the right. You could walk up a staircase to go outside, but you don't want to do that because if you go this way to the right, they have their own little private entrance here with our own private elevator. This is a shuttle elevator that goes from B2 to B1. This will bring you into the basement one level of the hotel. And then there's another set of elevators that you can take up to the hotel lobby or direct to your room. Speaking of the lobby, this is what it looks like. It's a pretty grand two-story space, lots of marble. They set it up differently for different special events. Uh, Check-in is there in the back. Very attentive staff check-in was pretty quick. To the left of the lobby by the front doors, there's a little kind of bakery cafe that sold pastries and things like that. And then up on the second floor, there were two restaurants, a Japanese restaurant and a Western restaurant. More on that in the review section after I show you the room. Now that we've checked out everything around the hotel let's go check out one of the rooms this is room 827 it's a superior twin room we're gonna start this review here I thought there was this very interesting small sofa with a little table right here just Topher size nice and short very Japanese style um, there's a couple of twin beds it is a superior twin room they are very low twin beds if you'll notice and then I'm gonna come over here. On each of the beds, there are pajamas placed on the beds as is traditional Japanese style. Two lights back here, um, foot lights down at the bottom, some information about if you want to get a massage, what numbers you could call to get a massage. I'm not sure I'll be taking them up on those services this evening. Um, if we look in uh, the kind of, this part of the room, there's uh, in room, refrigerator mini bar stocked with a few beverages flat panel television uh, there's a DVD player down here so you brought some DVDs you could play those a couple empty drawers there is a desk in the room right here it's got uh, plugs it's got wired internet in case you still have an Ethernet cable um, there's a couple of complimentary bottles of water here in the desk over on this side, we have this very nice electric tea kettle with a cool spout. Underneath the tea kettle, um, there's like kind of the continuation of the mini bar. There's a selection of alcoholic beverages right here. This is some Suntory whiskey, 17 years old. I'm sure that's pretty tasty. Uh, a couple of cups and a uh, ice bucket. There are ice machines on each of the floors. Uh, just backing up from this, something that's typical to a lot of Japanese hotel rooms is a in-room air purifier. So this will keep the air nice and pure. And then uh, the window right here is kind of recessed. It's on a pretty busy street in front of the main train station. It's just three blocks from the main train station. And if I kind of crane out and look this way, there's a Tokyo Hands, one of my favorite Japanese department stores just within eye shot of this room. All right, let's go ahead and take a look this way, back to the entrance of the room. There's a little spot. You can put your luggage here um, on the wall. 
The temperature, I haven't been in the room for a long time, so I'm not sure how well the cooling's gonna work. Basically, it's a knob that gives you temperature between 22 to 26 and high, medium, or low for the fan speed. So, not a lot of controls there. This is the in-room closet. And uh, what I will point out in this closet, you can see in here, why I love Japanese hotels, they always have these fabric uh, fresheners, which if I turn this knob, well, boy, I can't figure out how to get this thing to spray. But uh, it's a fabric and air freshener, release the wrinkles. A very large um, shoehorn to put shoes on. And back in the back of this, there's a pants press so that you could press your pants in here. Okay, and we'll go on to the final part of the room, which is the bathroom. I guess we just come in this way. Uh, it's a fairly good sized bathroom by Japanese standards. It's got one of these um, famous Toto toilets, the washlet. That, wow, it, uh, it flushes by itself, it uh, sprays, it bidets, it heats, it has water pressure. These things are amazing. Um, oh, and the flush, actually I flushed it because I leaned on this little flusher right here. Uh, on the sink, there's a whole bunch of these La Mer shampoos, and as any good Japanese hotel room would have a huge collection of toothbrushes, razors, hairbrush, shower cap, um, you know, as scrunchies, everything you would need. You don't even have to bring any toiletries with you here. Uh, nice towels, a um, actually, nice Panasonic hair dryer. Usually, hair dryers are kind of sketchy in hotel rooms. This looks fairly decent. And then finally, um, there's a decently deep bathtub that also has a handheld shower that you could kind of put in two positions. And uh, then an interesting little shelf right here that comes out you can put the soaps on. Okay, Topher, do you know what time it is? It's hotel review time. It's hotel review time. So it's this hotel gets... Four Tophers. Four Tophers. And uh, so before we get to the pros and cons of the hotel, you might be wondering what this silly looking getup that I'm wearing here is. Well, it's the hotel pajamas that they provide. And it's a little small because I didn't ask for the large, large size. They do have them, but... Um, well, it turns out I didn't actually sleep in it, but uh, I wanted to show them off. <clears throat> it's actually quite a nice fabric. It's quite soft, so maybe I should have slept in them. Oh, well, that's for next time. All right, so the pros, of course, the fact that they provide pajamas. I love them. They were clean, nice. Um, the bed was clean and nice. The room was clean and nice. Actually, the whole hotel was just clean and nice. Bathrooms, every area was nice. Many Japanese hotels are often kind of tired looking, uh, but this one didn't look tired. It looked kind of vibrant, definitely kept up quite a bit. The room was quiet. Uh, one of the things that I pointed out during the room walkthrough was the air conditioning, and I said, we'll see if that's actually cold. And let me tell you, it actually is. It was quite useful. It was warm and cold, and so uh, a lot of Japanese hotels don't have good AC. This one does. Uh, I mentioned the location, three blocks from the train station. Also super great that it's connected via the underground, so you don't even have to go outside to take the train. Also, we have the breakfast package here. And let me talk about the breakfast for a little bit because it's in the pros column. Breakfast was quite good. The Western style and the Japanese style. I'll talk Japanese style first. You get a breakfast coupon that you can use in either place. The Japanese style breakfast was a <clears throat> interesting Japanese looking restaurant. They made sort of like these Japanese gardens in there, even though it doesn't have any windows. Um, the You only get two choices. You get the rice set or the porridge set. The only difference is rice or porridge, but it comes with about 11 different plates on there for the breakfast, uh, fish, things like that. Uh, so definitely check that out. Though I'll say the service in there, um, it was a little stuffy. Just uh, Japanese restaurants are often very quiet and reserved. Uh, and everybody's watching you the whole time. So we had uh, breakfast two of the days in the Western style buffet. And let me tell you, it's Western style, but it's definitely a Japanese breakfast buffet. Uh, they had a great selection of Western inspired things like waffles and pancakes, though they definitely had their own rendition. What I will say, they really had a lot that was good on the buffet were eggs. They had um, cooked to order eggs, omelets. They had their own rendition on an eggs benedict, 
which was an egg McMuffin, an egg mentaiko, which is a spicy cod roe. It's a specialty of the region, and then cheese on top. Uh, they have them right at the front, so check those out. It's a different Eggs Benedict. Um, I'm not sure if I loved it, but it was definitely interesting, and it's a specialty of the region with that spicy cod roe. The omelet had cod roe. Everything had that. And I also want to point out the eggs in Japan, they have this really great yellow, orangish quality to them. So eat the eggs here. They're good. And drink the milk. It's really good as well. I really enjoyed the breakfast. And the staff was great. Nice. Uh, the Western restaurant has more windows, so it's much more of a kind of inviting, lively place to have breakfast. Um, okay, let's talk about the cons. What are the cons of this hotel? I mean, there aren't a lot of cons. The room is a good size. Um, but uh, it's not it's not huge by any means, and the room is also it's it's functional. It's not like elaborate or amazing. So that's probably the cons that it get is that the hotel is just it's nice and it's good and it's functional, but it's it doesn't it doesn't wow us in any particular way. Uh, and also we stopped by the fitness center because I always like to include the gyms in the video, uh, and all that we saw when we got there to the sixth floor was a sign that said closed. That was it. Uh, so. Anyway, that's the review, but if we were coming to Fukuoka, we would definitely stay at this hotel again. I think it is one of the best hotels in Fukuoka. Uh, good price, good room, all that sort of stuff. Topher, did you like it? I love it! He loves it! Okay, Topher, but we have to go on to our next hotel. All right, well, hey, if this was your first time here, make sure to click on this yellow ball to subscribe. You might enjoy watching some of our other videos from Japan. We have a whole bunch more in a playlist down below, or you can click one of these to watch some of our other videos. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.